I was surprised when I saw Rashford dropped. Can't believe it. All because Rashford overslept and then never heard alarm clock. Eric Ten Hag from then made his mind up. He was like, you must be mad if you think that you're making a line up. You'll wind up and your time's up. Done. Woo. I was surprised when I saw Rashford dropped. Wow. All because Rashford overslept and he never heard alarm clock. Eric Ten Hag from then made his mind up. He was like, you must be mad if you think that you're making a line up. You'll wind up and your time's up. Oh, bitch. Yo, this is the OT99 Bantery where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. This is the new year 2023 and this is the first OT99 vid to drop in the new year. Guess what? NK ain't here. Why? Because he's a... Joking. I'm not going to start off with swinging. <laughs> it's the new year. Look, Edwin, happy new year, my bro. Happy, happy new, new year, year, my bro. Year. Yeah. yeah, bro. We have to uh, give blessings for another year, you know. Course, Another bro. half of the seasons to analyze. Course, bro. Course, bro. And what way? What better way to go into the new year? Friends and fam, obviously, real ones. And Manchester United got that W. Look, big W into the new year. Cement in fourth place as we shoot this now. Obviously, it's coming a little bit late because New Year was New Year was busy and that. But you know what? Mm. Tottenham went and lost against Aston Villa right about now. So look, we're solidifying that top four. It looks like we've got Bournemouth in our next game. And things are going to get interesting. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully we can push onwards and upwards. Look, let's talk about Manchester United though. Against Aston Villa. Look. I mean, sorry, against Aston Villa. Against Wolves. Look. Manchester United against Wolves. This game is always stress. Always stress. I mean. I had my brother messaging me saying, oh, this game's boring. Oh, man, you're like, it's boring. I'm just like, yeah, you're right. And you know what? This game is always proved to be boring like that as well. Wolves don't make it like our games against Wolves. There's always been like one goal that separates Manchester United and Wolves in that outcome. If it's not a draw, there's one goal in it, whether it be nil-nil or one nils or do you know what I mean? Or one-one. But usually, like if anyone's gonna be victory, victorious, it's gonna be one goal in it. Probably like in the last 10, 15 games. And Manchester United managed to get the edge today. They managed to get the edge today because of bad man Rashi. Look, Edwin, we all know the drama before this game kicked off. Rashford was on mm. the bench. What was you thinking when you saw Rashford's name on the bench as a substitute? Do, <clears throat> do you know what? Initially, right, I didn't know it was for disciplinary reasons. I thought maybe, thinking about it, you've come back from the World Cup, maybe you haven't been training as much. You probably had a little break. So I thought he was just reshuffling the team. Like, I initially thought that maybe he's giving Rashford some rest time. You've got... Um, Anthony, who didn't play that much for um, Brazil, so I understand that he could play. You've got Martial, who just comes. So I just thought it was generally just a shuffle of the pack. Mm. That was it. But then it came out. You see, one thing about Ten Hag, you'll just say it how it is. So he came out and said it's disciplinary. Me, personally, I think he shouldn't have said it out loud. I think certain things are for behind closed doors because uh, mm. then it, it, it made Rashford... I don't know if he's doing it as a deterrent to show, look, bro, I'll just light you up in yeah. public. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But bro, I, I think gonna... that he should have kept yeah. it eternally. But, you know, Rashford said the reasons why he overslept, like, we're all human, innit? Like, we, you know, we've overslept for school, like yeah. work. So but... I understand. So if it's that reason, then I'm not too worried hmm. because that's something you can easily fix. If it was something different, then we can worry about that. But if that's the reason, and nothing's come out to counter it then you know just human error isn't it and look you know it, it looks like he was sharp and ready to play anyway when he came on big time big time and that's yeah. the thing i think i like about this eric ten hard fella yeah this manager of ours i'm backing him because i feel like he's being consistent throughout and i feel like he gives the fans enough and immediate enough to say do you know what something was wrong here but he doesn't go into the nitty-gritty of what was actually yeah. happening so we're all thinking like we would have never known what the disciplinary was about on, unless Rashford opened his mouth and said x y and z and same with Garnacho when he was just like you know what his attitude we don't know exactly what he was doing well I don't anyway um unless he said know. that he wasn't he wasn't training properly he was turning up late he was turning he was up late. Like Russia, yeah. and I just feel like I just feel like he's consistent with it I feel like he's stern I mean you're talking about Rashford who is our best player by a country yeah. mile right about now. No, let me not say best player, best attacking player, because Casemiro's yeah. doing his job, Martinez's doing his job. And you got dropped in a game like this where you want to solidify your top four, you, where you want to separate from the pack. Look, he dropped our star man. And that just says a lot about Ayrton Hargit. It says a lot about his principles, you know what I mean? And I feel like this guy, 
when he was doing that, it was a big statement he was making. It was something where you're trying to change the culture of Manchester United. Manchester United has been running rampant with guys doing whatever they wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Ronaldo obviously was one of the latest guys, but you had all guys leaking stuff to the press. You had guys just not turning up to training in the past. You had guys just doing all sorts of stuff. And I feel like with Eric Ten Hag, there's a new freshness there. There's a strictness there. There's a respect as well as... Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got the balance right. Do you know what I mean? Like he can make guys go out and do a mad run. He will join them in that run. At the same time, well, I he's... think it's, I think it's important though because he's installed in that no player is bigger than the club. And like you said, it got to a point where club players were just running riot. I'll do whatever I want. I know I'll still get the bag. I'll still get the contract. But and this is, I feel like he set president from when he set the levels of Ronaldo and Ronaldo left. Is that Ronaldo is one of the top. In current football, he's one of the top, he's in a, probably the top two current all-time players. Not all-time over the course, but current, right? Yeah. If you could do that to him, like, no one's above that. And it's Nobody. good. So, even these youngsters, no, bro, don't, don't fuck about it. Do you know what I liked about it, though, as well? Like, when Rashford, obviously, was getting interviewed, he was smiling. He still had a smile on his yeah. face. After that game, he had a smile on the face. He wasn't grumpy. He wasn't sulky. Yeah. He wasn't throwing his toys at the frame. He sort of he sort of understood the assignment. You know what I mean? Like I overslept. I'm taking it on a chin. Like this is how it goes. I'm not an exception to the rule. Like he's from his attitude and his body language. He's even like acknowledging that he's not an exception to the rule. He said it in his interview, like in in not those words, but he was just basically saying, you know what? I have to take the L because I overslept. Yeah. And I like that. I like that. He got on with it, he came off, off the bench and he scored. And those 45 minutes are very significant in him holding that bench because what it said was, yeah, it just sent out that message for the for the future ones like Ganacho. You get me, the he future had, ones. He Go even on. had that disallowed goal as well, wasn't it? Bro, he had the disallowed goal, bro. That accidentally just bobbed up on his hand. You know what I mean? He would have yeah. got he would have got a nice brace. Bro, Rashford's yeah. on smoke. Do you know what I mean? He's got like what? Yeah. 10 goals or so in all competitions and in maybe 22 apparent I don't even know where it is but he's he's doing well he's doing well and I feel like Rashford if he keeps up on this form man then we can start thinking about Rashford as one of the top talents out there we heard we saw a quote from Casemiro yeah. Casemiro was just like do you know what I didn't know about Rashford too tough before I came in but he was just like seeing him on the pitch and even off the pitch this guy has the potential to be top five in the world bro and I was just like raw like Casemiro you know for what he's done in the game for who he's played with in the game that's a significant comment for him to make do you understand he's been around the world's best he's been playing in the league with the world's best do you know what I mean and and he's, for him to make, he's only 25 as well so he's only 25 it's a significant statement when he made that I thought raw like Casemiro is saying that about Rashford he didn't say that about anyone else Mm. And for me, it just goes to show, like I was saying in the previous thing, that we, we, we're hard on our players because we know what level we, we was achieving, where it was coming from. Yeah. We want these guys to maintain a certain level. And I feel like with Rashford, it'll be mind-blowing to let this guy just leave on a free that we was almost going to do when he was going to go to PSG or whatever like that. I feel like, mm. um, yeah, he's coming into form. He's going to get his contract. But and all Ten Hag really seems to like him. He really seems to like him, bro. And you can see, like, with Manchester United, yeah, you see Rashford plays like every game. If he's not playing on a wing, right, doing a rotation thing, he's playing up top if Martial's not there. If he's not playing up top, he's playing on a right. Do you understand? Yeah. You know, doing a, he's like, he's a significant part of um, our gameplay. And I think it was interesting when Eric Ten Hag first came in because we didn't even know like if Rashford had a future at the club. We didn't even know if a lot of guys had a future at the club. But um, Eric Ten Hag really likes this guy and I feel he's going to have a bright future at the club. Do you know what I mean? And um, I must say, Eric Ten Hag, man, I think he's done a lot to improve a lot of the guys at our club. I, I can't say that a lot of guys have digressed. I can either yeah. say that they've maintained or even improved. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's testament to Eric Ten Hag and um, the discipline that he's instilling. And like I say, we watched that game yesterday. We was kind of frustrated, you know what I mean? Like, not we're not, we're not blowing wolves away, not taking our chances when, it, you know, against teams like that. But I feel like the conversation shifted. I feel like it shifted on. I think it shifted from us getting peppered in that game and losing that game like 2 0 or something like that and conceding in the first few minutes to us talking about not taking our chances 
and finishing off a team like Wolves, who traditionally has been or historically has been a tough team for us to like beat. I just feel like um, we're taking the steps, but obviously um, uh, Eric Ten Hag still needs all of his 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 his, his tools to build the squad that he's trying to build. But um, yeah, let's take it to uh, Anthony, man. Because like Anthony, Anthony for me is a got busy guy. He started again and um, on the right wing, holding down that spot. But Anthony's been getting a lot of like, I think the criticism starting to build up with Anthony. Um, and for me personally, I'm looking at Anthony and I'm like, I get that, I get frustrated with Anthony. I see Anthony as being a very raw product. Maybe like what Liverpool fans are with, with Nunez, yeah? Like in terms of his finishing. I get that with Anthony, not because of his finishing or anything like that, but in terms of taking guys on. I can see all your qualities and ability. Run out, guys. If you run out, guys, you can create a madness. He's doing good things and drawing defenders away and creating space. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at Rashford. You look at Garnacho. Why are everyone excited about Garnacho? He's taking guys head on. He's not shying away. He's not turning back, right? Rashford he runs at a defender, boom, it leads to a goal. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like Anthony personally should be doing the same. But what's your assessment on on Anthony so far? Obviously, he's had like, you know, half a half a season. What's your thoughts on him? I, I, it's hard to say because it's his first season, new league, probably even settling in with his family. So there's so many factors. But at the same time, I think he needs to start adapting his game for the Premiership. That stopping mm. and starting, the way I think the Holland league is, is is very much like possession based, so he can start slowing down. I think he slows down the game too much for us. Mm. And he's quite negative in his play. He'll cut in and pass backwards, or you know what I mean, instead of just running to the byline and doing anything. But mm. then it starts making me think, right? The way he's playing, yeah, is it even better than what Sancho was doing? And why has Sancho been dropped and sent to do individual training? Because if we're being honest, Sancho was playing much better than what Anthony's playing now. Like he had a few goals. I don't know what was going on outside of the pitch for him, but he didn't look that bad. You know what I mean? He had a couple game That's true. goals in the Europa. So it's just like if you're gonna drop Sanchez for that, like what's going on with him? But at the same time, it's like because we like squad depth, we can't even be dropping mm. Anthony now. But at the same time, we need to bring Sandro back because Anthony needs competition. Mm, mm. Sometimes players become a victim to their own comfortability. Mm. And they might be comfortable thinking, oh, the, like, I'll start over Elanga or, you know, Ganacho can't play on this side. And it's true. They're more likely going to play um, Rashford on the left. So it's true. I think we need Sandro back, man. Just to, Definitely. Just to provide, like... Yeah, man, I... I it just actually just hit me like Sancho's not like Sancho's not actually he never to me he never played that bad to mm. credit all this that's going on with him mm. being sent away to abroad to do this drop from the squad he's come back now he's doing individual training so it must be something going on outside of football that's affecting him that they don't want to say but definitely I back to say. Anthony I just think he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of work to do man yeah because yesterday he looked just off the pace like He'll get in a position where he'll try and do his skill. He'll get tackled straight away. Like mm. I don't know, he had that. He had a chance, and you know, miscuing shots. That it happens, but there's too much inconsistencies in his play. Yeah, and for I someone mean, for that amount, we need him to be lighting up that pitch. Even with like you compared him to Nunes, right? If Nunes is not scoring, at least he's causing mayhem. Mm. Like he's like even look at that time. Do you see that own goal that? Um, that defender score, like the David Luiz ran... looking one. <laughs> you see how he ran through the middle, bro. And nice like, chip. You see how he, you see how he ran through the middle, and even like the Man City game and what in the Community Shield and other games. Even if I know people saying he's not scoring, but he causes mayhem. He's just running around, opening spaces, running at defenders. I would rather see Anthony not work on his end product over time, but cause trouble, like running at defenders, causing mayhem. So they have the double team and then he releases it. Like, I'd rather see more in his game in terms of that. You know what I mean? Fam, 100%. Uh, that's what I feel like is well with Nunez. I feel like he's he's a guy that I would rather see. On, I would not rather see. I mean, I would rather see guys like Jota, 
or, 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 or Dan, Dan guys like Darwin Nunez starting against Manchester United because Darwin Nunez is a problem and I feel like people are overlooking like his inability to score at the minute over what he's contributing to the team and what, he's have, what impact he's having with the team. You've gone offline a bit, but I'll continue it. But on my point with, um, on my point with Anthony, I think I feel I feel the same in sense where he's not he's just not he's just not going at players. I mean, I can appreciate guys that are contributing to the team quite a lot and not firing right. I liked your party songs. Do you know what I mean? I liked your Fletchers. I liked your Valencias. He wasn't prolific in terms of goals and assists, but he was a hard working, you know, winger at the time. Then he went to fullback for Manchester United back in Fergie's era. With 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 Anthony, I do see him putting a little bit of the work rate and getting back and stuff like that. But going forward, I just don't feel with his skill set that he's doing enough to unsettle defenders. And that's my thing. Like you mentioned, he will, he will lose the ball right or stand up guys or do like a little step over, a little shimmy here and there then they'll just pick the ball off him. Like, they're just standing up a guy and just be decisive. You know what I mean? Like, drop a shoulder, cut inside. When you're in a box with your quick feet, anything can happen. Do you know what I mean? And he's, he's, he's predictable. We knew that it was predictable before coming into the Prem, but I thought, do you know what? With his trickery and his pace, even though he's predictable, he may still cause issues, but it's becoming a problem where he's so predictable, people know what to do now. You know, shove him on his weaker foot, don't let him cut inside. And you find Anthony just keep laying it off now because he, he's running out of options. But it's worrying. Same but time, mm. it goes back to what you're saying. Are we being a bit too harsh on him? Because we are harsh. We had to give him some time because if we look, he's probably had, what, 10 appearances or even less um, mm. for Manu. Um, yeah. Like, all, like it's going to be tough for him. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you will give him time because even with Casemiro when he was playing it was getting finding his feet and you get me us fans are getting nervous because it's well like between those two it's 170 million euros you know what I mean almost 200 million so you're going to get nervous he's only had eight appearances for us three goals who yeah, Anthony it's not it's, bad it's a decent return it's a decent return but like but at the same time I think the expectations too high that we have to give him time he hasn't even had double figures in terms of appearance well I think it says 14 appearances in total. Yeah. Including like all competitions, but that's not a lot, you know what I mean? So we've got to give him we've got to give him some time, man. You know what I mean? Do you know what it is with Manchester United? And I feel like what Manchester United is deprived of is um those consistent performers and, and ball players. And what I mean by that is like, say you got Martinez, we're excited about Martinez because he delivers all the time, right? He'll, 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 he'll read danger or sniff out the danger before it actually occurs. We like those type of players. Manchester United got guys like Bruno, who I like. You may you may think less of, but it's like again, these guys are. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of moments. Like there's a lot yeah. of moments with our players. A lot of moments like Anthony, that goal against against Arsenal. Wow, but, wow, wow. Okay, but let's be honest here. Yeah. We need what guys can that we... can just ball. You know what I mean? We need guys. That can what can just... we expect? I'm looking at the stats now. What can we really expect from? I I mean. Anthony. Anthony really in his first season in 2020 to 2021 46 appearances 11 goals second season 33 appearances and 12 goals and then the season before he he came it's three appearances two goals is out for someone that's not been that prolific what exactly are we expecting from him I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily want goals and assists from Anthony well, I do want goals and assists from Anthony but I think but my main thing see, is like, like Ganato doing, do you know what I mean be more effective like like for me I was screaming I want St. Maximin at the squad at one point because he's mm -hmm. always going to come on and stress out a defender like so much yeah. and those things create goals in, in other areas like you know what I mean Darwin Nunez is creating goals for Liverpool because he's yeah. stressing out defenders I bet you if he was to ask a lot of these defenders now like is, is, is Darwin Nunez I have easy to get people are making songs yeah there's you know you're just a shit Andy Carroll or whatever they're saying but at the same time, a lot of these defenders, when they're going up against that guy with physicality, speed, they're like, oh, this is long. And they're happy yeah. that he's fluke, he's fluffing his shots. They're like, oh, thank goodness. I haven't looked like a, a waste man after he's just skinned me. Like, that's all. That, and that's what they're thinking. So for me, man, hopefully he comes good. Get me, it's early days. It's eight It's eight games, you know, eight starts or whatever you mentioned. And, you know, hopefully he comes good. But it's, it's, it was a bit of a worry. Um, it was a bit of a worry watching his performances at the minute and hopefully he gets that yeah, competition. I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't pleased at all. Do you know what I mean? 
But yeah. uh, I wanted to touch on Luke Shaw though, because Luke Shaw's a, <laughs> and what this means for Maguire, right? Because Luke Shaw now he's played two games back to back. He's had two good performances. <laughs> he's looked good. He's looked good. Look, Maguire got brought on 87th minute or something to clear a corner header. And I could only imagine what's going through his mind. And Luke Shaw's looking good. And Eric Ten Hag justified that centre-back partnership with him and Varane. And especially on the left, because he said, you know what, we're up against pace on that side of the pitch. And and we needed someone like Luke Shaw to be able to balance that out and combat that that speed. So he's obviously acknowledged that pace is an issue. Like, if he, without saying it, he's saying, you know what, Maguire, you're too slow for what I needed in this game. You need, we needed pace. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like Lindelof again, he's not the fastest. He's, he's, he does a job when he comes on, he's not the fastest. He's holding bench. Maguire's definitely slow. He's holding bench. So I feel like if he is going to get another centre back, it's going to be obviously be one with pace that can play on that side as well and just be, or any side and just be cover. That's what I got from that statement that he made anyway. What's your thoughts on. Do you see Shaw as a, a potential centre back going forward? No, I think he's just covering. Look, <clears throat> I think the long term goal is to get another centre back or to wait for Martin Martinez to come back because then you have Linderhoff on the bench and if Varane stays fit, I think he's just slowly phasing Maguire out. But this is the mm. only way he can do it. Like mm. without right now, he, he's had his hands is tied behind his back. He can't sign probably a defender that he wants until the summer. So I think he's just using what he's got. Do you see and Maguire I'm getting a move? Maguire, yeah. Huh? I'm lucky for Maguire. Yeah. Shaw's been doing all right. He's been doing decent as a centre back. If I'm seeing it, I'm like, whoa! Remember that time when Pogba got? I don't even know who made this. Who who brought on? You and Pogba. This is earlier days. Someone came in in midfield, and then he was just fuming. And I think that was just the nail in the coffin for him. And he cut like someone that should have been starting over him started. I can't remember who it was, but um, I'm sure Maguire's going for a similar thing right about now. Where he's saying that we seen a left back start as a centre back. Well, been... let's be honest, yeah. They say Maguire is ill, but how ill is he? Like he's able to come on and sit with the team. So he ain't, he ain't ill. He ain't ill, man. Look, he's... you already know I'm not a fan of Maguire's, but yeah. I'm just happy that if it's the case that Ten Hag's gonna let him go, that he's seen it because. All the other managers have seemed to like see that he's good, but he's not like for the for what we need and the level we're playing at. It's just he's not good enough. Do you know why I rate Eric Ten Hag as well? Because after that World Cup and all of the media pressure and everything that was going around, not media pressure, but every, all the gas that was getting blown up, um, Maguire right? about him being quality for England and everything like that. Yeah. And, like Eric Ten Hag didn't. He won't face. He's not. He's not moved by that. He knows what he needs. But let's be honest. Maguire, Maguire didn't even play well in the World Cup. But the media play out like he had a really good World Cup. He played well. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. Him, he's not one of my first choice defenders. Mm. I think. I think he's. I reckon he's gone in the summer. Do you reckon he's moving on in the summer? And if so, how much do you reckon we're gonna get from? And what team is he going? But who's to? gonna buy him? Look, Newcastle should come in for him and take him, you know. New, but, the, the, but the thing is, Newcastle, they're not yep. they're not the umbra. They'll have two of the slowest centre backs, him and Sven Botman. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they won't they won't buy him because it's like it just doesn't make sense. Who knows? They may, but like how much oh. are we really gonna get him? Like Chelsea just signed a young, good defender for 30 35 mil. mil. We're gonna get maybe 25, 30 mil max. Look, he can even go back to Leicester. They can take him as take him back. You get me? They lost Sionku, right? Because he left in the free. Yeah. He's gone. So someone's got take now him. now they've got a defender that thinks he's a striker. I swear down. I swear that. Look. So do you know what? It'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens to him, but look, I just think his days are numbered. It is, it is. And I, and I'm happy that Eric Ten Hart's making decisions. That's right. But it depends. If him. he comes up and he starts playing well. My problem is that he's he even the times he's come on, he hasn't showed any improvement in his mm. gameplay. Mm. So, I, 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 I mean, whether he, if he comes good, great. But I, I really am happy that Eric Ten Hag making decisions that's right for him. That's yeah. not influenced by external factors or whether someone costs money or whether they're captain or what, what the media says. He really is just he's really he staying true. His job's on the line. His job's on the line, man. So I, I rate it from day one. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, look. David De Gea made some quality saves in that game, kept us in the game. Look, this is a guy whose contract's been, was up for renew. It's being negotiated at the minute for a lower cost. I think he's on 375 or 370 yep. or 3. 
and it's been uh, David De Gea, and then we're, we're going to okay. renew his, give him a lot, new long term. They have to uh, though. Have not Newcastle just re- um, recalled their goalkeeper? They recruited Martin Depravka. Yeah, they recalled him. We've got Heaton on the bench now, who's like thirty-six years old anyway, turning thirty-seven in mm. April. And do you know what I mean? We we just and we've got like we, we haven't really got quality backup. I would say David De Gea is really consistent in terms of like he's just he's just present, ever present. Yeah, I don't What's your thoughts? I don't, I don't see he's done anything to credit him being dropped or us by the new goalkeeper. I think we can keep him for a couple more seasons. Right. He made a he good save team. against Nunes. Ne- I'm sorry, Neves. He made a quality save against Neves. Yeah, and he also, but, remember the point blank save with the header at him directly, sort of yeah. reactions there, pushed but it away. A lot of like, people are saying that, uh, you know, we should get rid of him. But I'm like, I always fought for what? Like, he hasn't done anything wrong in my eyes. Mm. There is, it's yeah, the ball player. And, and, and what can you do if you've got a poor defence in front of you sometimes? Mm. It's been less stress yeah, now. You're not seeing... Look, we're keeping them clean sheets, right? Back yeah. to back. I think we've had, like, what, three, four back-to-back in a row. Um, I think we look, keep him, man. He's not, he's not being star with, the, star with the news. Remember, every time you'll get a man of the match now, it's just like, you, you hardly see David here. You'll make one or two saves, right? Yeah. So, like, what every top quality um, goalkeeper should do, and, he's, and that's it. I feel but like my question to you. Hmm. Bruno, what are we doing? Bruno? What are we doing? Um, like we've talked about flying, yeah. I think Bruno had. I, I don't rate Bruno like that, and I think he had a mer yes. I don't think he had a good game yesterday, but <laughs> you know, that's just my opinion. I, I've been screaming like I pointed out a few players. Maguire, I've been said for a long time, not good. Like, yeah, Bruno to me, he's not doing enough for the position he plays in, the amount of possession he has. He's not doing enough for me. Well, that's my thing with, with Bruno, because obviously we naturally compare him to De Bruyne or now Odegaard, right? And when I look at these these profiles of players, they're not really the same. Like for me, like Bruno is slightly different. He's not on a he's he's not like a he's not a De Bruyne type player or Odegaard type player. I feel when like you decide to play in that different. role, because you remember when they asked him, he he wanted to play further up. Once you decide to play further up, bro, you got to take everything with it. Yeah, you can't I get say it. That's not, you know what I mean? I get it. I mean, I know, I know. De Bruyne can play out wide. Um, Bruno play, he can play out left and the right. He plays deep. But Bruyne can do that. Don't get me wrong. Odegaard, I'm not hundred percent sure about Odegaard. I can't remember. But for me, it's just like with with Bruno, he's more like he's a confusing type of player. He's a hybrid type of player. Like he can play as a supporting striker. We was even talking about playing him up front. Nobody's talking about starting. I know Pep does madness, but nobody's like, oh, let's let's. Nobody's saying, oh, let's see De Bruyne up top. Like, if if you know, what I mean, no one's talking no, but about. He played up brother. front, though. He's he played, played up front. front last year as a false nine. You remember? Yeah, and he done a good job, but like, I just feel like they're different. I just feel like they're different. Like Bruno's not a guy to like keep ball possession. He's not a guy that can dictate play. He's a high risk, high risk, um, advanced playmaker type person. He's someone that gets the ball. He's always looking for that runner, and nine times out of you know nine times out of ten, those balls don't come off. Um, and but when it does, it looks spectacular. He's not a guy to really be doing. He can do the link up play, but he's not really a guy to be doing the Ozil type. Like he's not he's not on that. He's not like that type of player. And I feel like this is why Eric Ten Hag really wanted um, Frankie De Jong. He really wanted yeah. someone that can play that ball, take the ball from the defense, dictate the game. You know what I mean? Like. Um, and we ain't got those type of players. We've got Casemiro doing a good job in shielding the defence and he's a good ball player. Like He's got tech on him as well, the pass on the shot. But he's just not that type of guy. And I think like the next transfer windows, you know, coming up, I feel like Eric Ten Hag will be looking for someone to try and address that. You know, Enzo yeah. Fernandez and all of these guys, um, we need guys to supplement. We need guys to supplement, you know, to help us get to that style because right now we're, yeah. we're far from it. And then, like I said, offline, we're looking at guys that are Arsenal manager. He's had years in the game to to, to embed his star, and it's coming to it's coming to fr- uh, fruition. And I feel like Eric Ten Hag will be the same man. He's doing a really good job for someone that's just. I just, I really just don't think he's doing season. enough. But we'll see. Then there's a long time to go in this season. Hopefully, he improves. You just that uh, you see other playmakers or number tens really taking their team by the scruff of the neck and pushing them over the line or being very influential in the game. He He's he's about a lot, but he just doesn't do anything mm. to me. You know mm. what I mean? So, we'll see. 
fam. Bruno's Bruno's gonna win you over one of these days. His work ethic, his leadership, his. We'll his... see. Maguire did it, so we'll see. <laughs> Look, who was but, your man of the match, though? But before we before we go on to that, just quick quickly, just mind for time though. Juan Bizaka, what, what how do you feel about his transition back into the team? Um, do we keep him? Do we get another right back, or do we actually allow him to develop? Because he looks like he's improving, and I think with a bit more confidence, he may end up being much better. I see Juan Bissaka as someone that's probably improved marginally. Marginally. Mm. And I feel like, not like massively, where I'm like, oh, wow, like, this is an amazing. And I know a lot of people are doing that. You know, when someone's out of sight for a while, then they come yeah. back in and you're just like, oh, this is amazing. I just feel like he's just been out of sight for a while. Um, but I do see him consciously trying to like, play ball more do you know what I mean like, yeah. he's more cautious one touch football, one -touch yeah. football. I, I see him doing that and not slowing down the game so he's he's, he's he's trying to make that change just like David De Gea was trying to do it when he first he, he, he first sort of started playing these games then you realise now that every time he kicks the ball now into the crowd it's going to the opposition player it's just yeah. one of those things but um, with Wemba Saka I still feel like I'm not I'm not pressed to lose Aaron Wambasaka because especially now I see that he's played a couple of games and with certain games we can get by of him playing there. I'd rather have him there than Malaysia playing on the right hand side. Um But yeah, I mean I wouldn't have minded him leaving if we got that right profile. Like I wanted Dumfries. If we got Dumfries, I was like bye bye like Aaron Wambasaka. Do you know what I mean? I know he's linked with the Frimpong Frimpong from and um, Bayern Leverkusen as well, but I mean I think I think we I think we're gonna keep him anyway. And I feel like I don't feel no way. I feel like he's he, he has the right to try and earn and and fight and fight for his spot just like most of these other guys did. So look, Basaka man, one Basaka man, South London and all that. You have to you have to back that, you get me? You have to back that. But look, who was your man of the match though? Shall I go with mine first? Yeah, go with yours. It's gonna be bait, isn't it? It's bait. What Rashford? It's got to be Rashi, man. It's got to be yeah. Rashi. And it's like, because he came on and he got that goal like disallowed and then he scored as well. And that 45 minutes, he just turned the whole game around. I have to give an honourable mention to Fred as well, because I think his substitution, when he came on, he provided that energy yeah. injection that we needed really badly. Um, but yeah, I, I'll say I'll say Rashford, man. And his attitude, his attitude towards the game as well, which is what I rate as well. I mean, had a smile on his face. He wasn't frowning. Look, interviewed like a boss, took accountability, and we've been lacking that. So I back him still. Who are you going with? I probably go with Rashford, game winner. You know, um, very dry and quiet game. He came and changed the game, so I have to give it to him. But look, another um, mention to Casemiro, another solid performance by him. Mm -hmm. He's just showing the levels between him and a lot of the players on the team. Scott McTominay so, is a myth now. It's a myth for Scotty. Yeah, I feel like honourable mention to Shaw played well at left back. Juan Bazaka, I feel played all right, especially being out the whole season, like to slot into the team and not look too out of place. Ganacho, interestingly, was the most effective player in the first half. Yeah, he in was. Terms he of was running that player, causing trouble. So, yeah. But I remember we spoke about this, and a reason I think they took him off is when they brought on Ture, Like he's not going to go back and track mm, and keep mm. up with him or go anywhere strength to strength with them. So, yeah, but yeah, I'll probably give it to Rashford, but those are my honourable mem uh, mentions as well. <laughs> Drury, yeah, with his baby oil in his arms, you know, that guy just doesn't That's like cool. getting grips. He's tight, he's tight short sleeves. They're shiny arms, boy, that, I like this guy. Is that or he's waiting to shoot some r and <laughs> <90 laughs> Mad tig, mad tig. Look, salute, salute, man. Look, it's another show, another episode, OT99 Banter Room. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe share this video man first video of 2023 look we're going to be back again against bournemouth in the fa cup efl cup all those games in between man to share our opinions and likewise you share yours until then peace peace